Boyhoods of Great Composers, Book Two. Read by Lena Chan from Lena's Music House. Peter Ilyich Tchaikovsky. Beside the main road in Votinsk stood a pair of iron gates. If you went in through them, you came to a big white house set among trees. Much of the year, the garden and the street were white as well, under a carpet of snow. Botinsk is far away in the heart of Russia. The winters are long and cold, with snow from October till March. Inside the house, there were big stoves and roaring log fires to keep it warm. The Tchaikovskys, who lived there 120 years ago, were a large family with great many servants. So there was always plenty of noise and people hurrying about. Mr. Tchaikovsky was in charge of the mines at Voltinsk. This made him the most important man in the town. Neighbours often used to come to the White House for parties and concerts. They lived hundreds of miles away from any big city and had no theatres or cinemas to go to. When they lived at Voltinsk, Mr. and Mrs. Tchaikovsky had four children. The eldest was Nicholas. Two years later, Peter was born, followed by Alexandra and another boy, Hippolyte. A cousin called Lydia lived with them as well. As there was no school in Votinsk, the children had to have a governess, a teacher from France called Fanny Durbach. She was a kind and thoughtful person and a good teacher. At first, Miss Durbach gave lessons only to Nicholas and Lydia, but soon, Peter wanted to join in too. Although he was two years younger, he quickly caught up with the others. In fact, Miss Durbach found him the easiest to teach. He learnt very fast and was a loving and obedient little boy. By the time he was six, he could read both French and German easily. He even started writing poems in French. Often when the day's lesson were finished, Miss Durbach and the children took it in turns to make up stories. Peter's were usually the best and strangest of all. He could see things very clearly in his mind's eye. Everyone petted him because he was so quick and friendly. He felt all the more sad if he was told he was naughty. In fact, where other children need to be punished, a few sharp words were enough to make Peter sorry. Peter also felt sorry for anyone who was weak or unhappy. Once he heard that one of the gardeners was going to drown a cat. Peter was so upset that he went to find this man. The little boy pleaded and pleaded with him, and in the end, the man agreed to spare the cat. When Peter was six, his half-sister Zanada came home from boarding school. As she was a lively girl, the house became merrier than ever. Yet Peter was really happiest on his own. He liked to find a quiet place to read or write. Best of all, he liked to play the piano. His mother, who was a pianist herself, gave him a few piano lessons. Then he quickly taught himself to play any tune he heard. Some of these were tunes his mother played or sang to him, but most of them he heard for the first time on the orchestrion. This was a specially large and wonderful music box. His father had bought it in St. Petersburg. Instead of one or two, he played dozens of different tunes. There were songs from operas and pieces for orchestra. On the side of the box were handles you can pull in and out to make the music louder or softer. Peter was never tired of working the orchestrion. Soon he knew all its tunes by heart. Then he taught himself to play them on the piano. Miss Durbach was worried to see how much time Peter spent at the piano. She thought he ought to be out in the open air playing with other children. When she felt he had been at the piano long enough, she told him to come away. But he would not listen. Then she or his mother had to drag him off the piano stool. Still, he would not give up. Often, he went and sat by a window and drummed out the rhythm of the tune on the pane. Once, he got so excited that he actually broke the glass and cut his hand. One evening, his parents gave a musical party. His mother and some of the guests played and sang, and the children were allowed to stay up late to listen. 
Peter was very happy at first, but soon he said he was tired and went up to bed. Later that night, Miss Durbach found him lying awake, crying to himself. She asked him, what was the matter? And Peter said, Oh, this music saved me from it. Then he pointed to his head crying. It is here, here, and won't give me any peace. It was as if the tunes were prisoners in his head, trying to break their way out. When Peter was eight, the family left for Tinsk. Mr. Tchaikovsky decided he wanted a job nearer his friends, nearer theatres and concerts. So the family packed up their trunks and travelled to Moscow. They arrived to find many people ill with a terrible disease called cholera. To add to their troubles, Mr. Tchaikovsky did not get the job he hoped for. Next month, they packed once more and went on to St. Petersburg. Peter was very upset by all this moving. He had loved Votinsk and was sad to leave it. Mrs. Tchaikovsky had little time now to spend with Peter and Nicholas. Zenaida looked after them instead, and she was not very kind or gentle. Peter missed his mother's loving care. To make matters worse, his parents sent him and Nicholas to a large day school for boys in St. Petersburg. The work was very hard and the other boys often teased him. But at least in St. Petersburg, there were plenty of good piano teachers. Peter started learning with a man called Filipov and made very good progress. In St. Petersburg, there were also plenty of operas and plays to see. Peter often went to the theatre with his parents and found it exciting. In fact, this new life in St. Petersburg was much too exciting for a nervous boy like Peter. In the country, he went to bed early and life went on the same day after day. Here in the city, he grew pale and thin, easily cross and upset. When he got measles, instead of getting over it quickly like Nicholas, he became really ill. The doctors told Peter's parents that he must do no work for six months. Luckily, his father got a new job just at this time. It was out in the country and the family were able to leave St. Petersburg. When they were settled in, Peter started lessons again with a new governess and soon made up for lost time. Next summer, when Peter was 10, his mother had twin boys. Peter was delighted with the babies. He loved to sit with them, tickling their toes. He wrote to Miss Durbach, I have already seen them several times, and each time they have seemed to me to be angels come to earth. All his life he loved them more than his other brothers and sister, but he was still not quite his old happy self again. When he felt sad, he used to spend hours at the piano making up tunes. His parents did not like him to do this. They were afraid it might bring back his illness, nor did they want their son to make music his career. It was hard for a Russian to be a musician in those days. Most music in Russia was written and played by Italians and Germans. Nobody thought any Russian composers wrote good music. Instead, Peter's parents wanted him to work in a government office. There was a special school in St. Petersburg which trained boys for this. So Mr. and Mrs. Tchaikovsky decided to send Nicholas and Peter there as boarders. They went to the new school when Peter was 10. Their mother came with them to St. Petersburg. For the first few weeks, Mrs. Tchaikovsky stayed on in the city and the boys saw her every Sunday. But in October, she had to go home. Peter felt that the most terrible moment of his life had come. He could not think how he could ever go on living without his mother. He went to see her off in her carriage, clinging to her shoulder as long as he could. In the end, a friend held him back while Mrs. Tchaikovsky climbed aboard. Then, as the carriage moved off, Peter broke away and ran after it. He gripped one of the wheels and tried to hang on as it gathered speed. Finally, kind friends took him back to school, worn out with crying and misery. He never forgot that awful day till the end of his life. He rode again and again, begging his mother to come and visit him. But she was too busy with the other children to come to St. Petersburg. Slowly, he came to hate school a little less, but he was never happy there. All the same, he was slowly learning to stand on his own feet. In the autumn, after his son's 11th birthday, Mr. Tchaikovsky came to St. Petersburg. When the moment came to say goodbye this time, Peter did not cry. For the next three years, everything went well for the family. 
but when Peter was 14, a terrible blow came. Mrs. Tchaikovsky caught cholera, and within a few days, she was dead. The shock was greater to Peter than to the other children. He had always been closest to his mother. He loved her even more deeply than most children loved their mothers. Up to this time, he often wrote to Miss Durbach to tell her about the family. Now it was over two years before he could bring himself to tell her this terrible news. For some time, the family broke up. The younger children went into homes while Peter and Nicholas stayed on at school as boarders. After a while, Mr. Tchaikovsky took them all away for a seaside holiday. But with their mother gone, it did not seem at all like the jolly holidays they had before. About this time, Peter began to take up music again. At first, he turned to it to take his mind off his sorrow. When he sat at the piano, making up tunes, he could forget that his mother had gone. But at the same time, he decided to go on learning music once more and started to have lessons again. Peter had always sung in the school choir. Now he started to take solo singing lessons as well. When he was 15, he started piano lessons too, with a teacher called Kudinga. After a while, Mr. Tchaikovsky asked Kudinga if Peter was gifted enough to make music his career, but Kudinga said no. Peter was good, above all, at making up his own tunes at the piano, but not good enough. In spite of this disappointment, Mr. Tchaikovsky encouraged his son to work steadily at his music. Peter spent all his spare time practicing and learning how to write music. At last, he made up his mind that he was going to be a great composer, whatever other people might say. But it was still a distant dream for him as he sat at his school desk. First, he had to take his final examinations. When he passed, he would get a job in a government office. This would leave only his evenings free for music. It would take him many years to learn enough to be able to compose really first-rate music. But in the end, Peter did become a great composer. Many people think he was the greatest Russian composer there has ever been. Certainly, he was the first Russian composer whose music became known all over the world. He wrote music of all kinds, symphonies, concertos, songs and operas. But most people hear his ballet music first, Sleeping Beauty, Swan Lake and The Nutcracker. Peter had always loved to watch dancing. He also found fairies and magic exciting. So there is a real enchantment in his music. In The Nutcracker, the dance of the sugar plum fairy sparkles like pinnacles of sugar icing. Many men would have left Russia and looked for fame in Paris or Vienna. But Tchaikovsky stayed at home. He loved his country and wanted to write for Russians and not foreigners. He would not have been happy outside Russia. As it was, sadness kept on coming into his life. After those happy first years in Votinsk, nothing went entirely right again. All his life, he never forgot the terrible sorrows of his childhood, the day his mother left him alone at school, and then her death. 